The coastline, not as a boundary of rock and wave, but as a grid of perfect squares. A landscape re-engineered, where the wild chaos of the mangrove has been replaced by the stark geometry of the pond. This is not the open ocean, the domain of the hunter. This is the farm, the domain of the scientist and the gambler. In these murky, man-made waters, a global industry is born. One that transforms a creature smaller than an eyelash into a multi-billion dollar commodity. This is the secret world of shrimp farming. It is a story not of pursuit, but of production, a relentless cycle of birth, growth, and harvest on an unimaginable scale. Here, fortunes are not won by battling storms, but by mastering the delicate chemistry of life itself, and they are lost in an instant to an enemy that cannot be seen, heard, or fought with steel. The journey begins not in the sea, but in the sterile, controlled environment of the hatchery. This is the inner sanctum, a world of filtered light, bubbling tanks, and the low hum of pumps and aerators. Here, biology is tamed and manipulated broodstock, carefully selected for their genetic traits, are induced to spawn. From them come millions upon millions of larvae, microscopic specks of life drifting in artificially perfect seawater. For weeks, they are nurtured through their complex life stages, fed a precise diet of cultured algae and brine shrimp. Technicians in lab coats move silently between the tanks, their work more akin to chemistry than fishing. They monitor salinity, pH, temperature, and ammonia levels with obsessive precision. This is a nursery for billions, and it is a place of profound fragility. A slight change in temperature, a stray bacterium, can cause a tank to crash, wiping out millions of potential shrimp in a matter of hours. The product of this intense, scientific midwifery is the post larva, or PL, a miniature, translucent shrimp, ready for the next, most perilous stage of its existence. From the laboratory, the PLs are transported in oxygenated bags to the grow-out farms, the vast checkerboards of ponds that dominate the coastline. Here, the sterile bubble of the hatchery is burst, and the shrimp are released into a world teeming with variables. The ponds, each the size of a football field, are a carefully managed ecosystem, a murky green soup rich with plankton. The farmer's role now shifts from technician to constant guardian. His day starts before dawn not scanning the waves, but walking the levees that separate his ponds. He studies the color of the water, a clue to the health of the algae. He checks the paddlewheel aerators that churn oxygen into the water, the mechanical lungs of his farm. He pulls up feed trays, checking for the telltale signs of hungry, healthy shrimp, or the dreaded lack of activity that signals the onset of disaster. This is a life of constant vigilance. The farmer is not looking for a single prize, he is the custodian of millions of tiny lives, and the shepherd of a massive, submerged herd. Twice a day, the feed is distributed, a carefully formulated pellet raining down across the surface of the ponds. It is a high-protein diet designed for rapid growth, turning tiny PLs into market-sized shrimp in just three to four months. It is a race against time, a push to grow the crop as quickly as possible before the invisible enemy arrives. This enemy is the secret that haunts every shrimp farmer's dreams. It is not a predator with teeth and claws, but a microscopic plague. Viruses with names like white spot syndrome or early mortality syndrome are the specters of this industry. They can be carried on the wind, in the water from a neighboring farm, or by a single contaminated bird. There is often no warning. One day, the shrimp are feeding voraciously, the next, they are listless, their shells showing the telltale white spots. Within 72 hours, an entire pond, a living vault containing tens of thousands of dollars of shrimp, can be transformed into a toxic, decaying graveyard. The farmer is helpless. There is no cure, no antibiotic that can stop the viral wave. All he can do is harvest immediately, salvaging what he can before the entire crop is lost, or cut his losses and drain the pond, a scorched earth tactic to prevent the disease from spreading. This constant, pervasive threat turns the farmer into a gambler on a colossal scale. Every single crop is a roll of the dice against a biological catastrophe. If the farm survives the threat of disease, the harvest is a spectacle of frantic, nocturnal activity. It happens at night, when temperatures are cooler and the shrimp are most active. Giant nets are dragged through the ponds, corralling the entire population towards a collection sump. As the water is drained away, the pond floor is revealed, a writhing, shimmering mass of silver-gray bodies, 
A powerful pump, like a giant vacuum, sucks the shrimp from the water, depositing them into baskets. Now, a new race begins, the race against decay. A team of workers descends, moving with practiced speed. The shrimp are immediately dumped into vats of ice slurry, a thermal shock that kills them instantly and preserves their freshness. The air fills with the sounds of shuffling baskets, the crunch of ice, and the shouts of the crew. Ton after ton of shrimp are weighed, boxed, and loaded onto refrigerated trucks, all within a few short hours. The entire value of the four-month crop depends on the efficiency of this single night's work. From the farm, the journey continues to the processing plant, a world of stainless steel and freezing temperatures. Here, the shrimp is fully transformed from a creature into a product. Conveyor belts carry thousands of pounds of shrimp past lines of uniformed workers. In a blur of motion, they are de-headed, peeled, de-veined, and graded by size. What was once a living organism becomes a perfectly uniform, frozen commodity, sealed in plastic bags and packed in boxes for export. From this one coastal region, containers filled with millions of individual shrimp will be shipped to supermarkets, restaurant chains, and dinner tables 10,000 miles away, their complex and perilous origin completely invisible to the final consumer. The profits are immense. A single successful harvest can make a farmer a millionaire. But the risks are equally staggering. Many farmers are locked in a cycle of debt, borrowing heavily for feed and PLs, praying that disease will spare them for one more season. This explosive growth has come at a significant cost. The secret world of shrimp farming also hides an environmental toll. Vast tracts of vital mangrove forests, which serve as crucial nurseries for wild fish and protect the coast from storms, have been cleared to make way for these ponds. The water discharged from the farms, often laden with nutrient-rich waste, pesticides, and antibiotics, can pollute surrounding estuaries and harm wild marine populations. It is a story of tension, a global demand for affordable shrimp fueling an industry that strains the very coastal ecosystems where it operates. It represents a new relationship between humanity and the ocean, one where we no longer hunt its wild bounty but remake its edges into factories for producing flesh. In the end, the journey from a tiny larva to a global commodity is one of modern alchemy. It is a triumph of scientific control, a testament to human ingenuity in bending the rules of nature to our will. But it is also a cautionary tale of ecological consequence and immense risk. It is a world where fortunes are built on a foundation of biological precision and shattered by the random cruelty of a virus. Each frozen shrimp in a grocery store is the silent survivor of an invisible war, the final product of a violent, fragile, and incredibly profitable journey. This is the secret world of shrimp farming, where millions of lives are manufactured for millions in profit, and where the line between a bumper crop and total ruin is as thin as the shell of a single, 